The Nintendo 3DS launched in 2011 and was a big milestone in the history of portable gaming. As the successor to the highly successful Nintendo DS, the 3DS expanded on its predecessor's legacy with innovative features in a diverse game library. Combining glasses-free 3D technology, backwards compatibility, and a strong lineup of first and third-party titles, the 3DS managed to carve its own legacy in the competitive world of handheld consoles. Fast forward to today and the 3DS has been discontinued. They are becoming harder to find and in most cases people are charging more for one than it cost when the handheld was new. But luckily we don't need real hardware to enjoy the system because we have emulation. You got a PC, a Mac, Android or iOS device then well they can play 3DS games through emulation. The emulator that allowed us to emulate the 3DS was Citra, which was released back in 2014. It supports a wide range of commercial titles with high compatibility and enhanced features that far surpass what the original hardware offered. These include increased internal resolutions, texture filtering, widescreen hacks, customizable controls, and multiplayer support via local wireless emulation and netplay. In recent years, Citra also benefited from major performance and quality of life updates. Optimization for modern GPUs and multi-core processors have reduced the once high system requirements, making emulation more accessible to users with mid-tier hardware. Additionally, improvements in the user interface, safe state management, and shader caching made the experience smoother for newcomers and us emulation vets. Then came 2024, the year Nintendo decided to go after the Nintendo Switch emulator Yuzu, and the team behind Yuzu was also the same team that created Citra. A settlement was reached where both Yuzu and Citra's developers were ordered to cease operations, including shutting down their associated websites, code repositories, and other platforms. As a result, Citra's development and distribution have been halted and it was no longer available for use, unless, well, you had it stored on a drive for safekeeping, and I hope everyone out here is doing this with these emulators. But as the emulation community knows, you can't really kill off an emulator. If one falls, another will rise sometimes even more than one. Since Citra development was stopped, a number of unofficial forks and bills of Citra have emerged to cater to specific needs. These include Citra MMJ, which focuses on performance improvements for Android devices, and Citra Enhance, which includes extra graphic and input tweaks. Though not officially supported by the main development team, these versions fill niche gaps and have attracted communities of their own further expanding the reach of 3DS emulation to smartphones, tablets, and handheld PCs like the Steam Deck and Aya Neo systems. Then came Lemonade, which is a rebrand of Citra Enhanced, and Lime 3DS, which is a direct fork of Citra. And as the recording of this video, the latest fork is called Azahar, and is currently the best option for 3DS emulation, and is still receiving updates to make it even better in the future. This project was a merge between Pablo MK7 Citra Fork and Lime 3DS. Azahar is available for PC, Android, Mac, and Linux. If you are an iOS user, then you have an option as well. There's a multi-system emulator available on the App Store called Folium. Now, this emulator does have a few issues like slowdown and lag on higher demanding games, and it doesn't matter which chipset is in your Apple device. Also, the compatibility isn't as good as Azahar, and it is not free. It will cost you $5 to use. Which really isn't a lot, but it would have been nice to be free. Then there's another 3DS emulator available for PC, Mac, Linux, and Android called Panda 3DS. Now this is not a fork of Citra, so it's way behind everything else I have mentioned, and it lacks a lot of features you get on other emulators, such as my favorite feature, graphic upscaling. Now this emulator is still in development as far as I know, but the updates take a long time to come.
As for mobile 3DS emulation, we have seen a big leap thanks to the improved performance of ARM-based processors in phones and tablets. In 2025, top-tier Android devices can emulate many 3D titles at full speed with enhancements. Though limitations still exist with games that heavily rely on dual screen and gyro controls. On handheld PCs, such as the Steam Deck and ASUS ROG Ally, 3DS emulators offer a near-perfect experience. These devices provide enough horsepower to run even the most demanding 3DS games with enhancements like widescreen patches and 60fps hacks. These features redefine how older games can be enjoyed today. Looking ahead, the future of 3DS emulation is likely to focus more on refinement than major breakthroughs. With the majority of the library already playable, developers may shift more attention toward emulation of Street Pass or Amiibo integration with VR or AR technologies, and preserving untranslated titles through fan-driven efforts. As open source communities continue to thrive, it's possible that we will see better solutions for replicating the unique dual screen setup. And as Nintendo and other companies move further into digital ecosystems with limited backwards compatibility, emulation emerges not as a piracy tool, but as a vital means of preservation and access. If you need help setting up any emulator seen in this video, then check out my guides in the description and keep emulating guys.